All right, folks, we are sitting inside the 2006 Chevrolet Trailblazer. It's the LS with the big 4.2, exactly as it says here. And we're going to talk just a smidge on freeze frame data and the values that can come from it sometimes, but not always. So we're going to take and pull the codes. Now, I scanned the codes for this in the parking lot earlier today, and it had a thermostat code in it, PO128, I believe it was. We'll let it get loaded up here and then we're going to go in and look at freeze frame data to see what we can gather from it and code setting criteria what's it take to make this code set and can we see that in freeze frame data without even you know essentially taking the car for a ride particularly with a you know a code like this where we you know could have to replace the thermostat so let's see here so it is at P0128, it is a history code, valve sense cleared, and it is the one that has the mill on. So we're going to jump in here to the failure record or your freeze frame data, which you can also get this information out of uh, generic OBD2. So what we're going to look at, a couple things we're going to want to know. We're going to want to know coolant temp sensor. So is that 167 degrees at the time, you know, the code set, the vehicle is cruising down the road. What we would like to know too is engine runtime. Hopefully, I don't skip right past it here. It should be. So, startup coolant was 135. Is there an engine runtime? I'm not seeing it here in factory data, so that's kind of interesting. Let me just make sure it's distance sent. Engine speed, it should have engine runtime right here. Uh, 539, I'm assuming that's going to be seconds. Maybe it's 5 minutes 39 seconds. Uh, gosh, that's not as helpful as I thought it was going to be. Let's back out of here. Let's look at this value record 167.530. So that's the same exact one. I tell you what, what we're going to do, let's pop right out of vehicle specific. We are going to go, I think we're going to push the little car button there. Maybe the garage button, there we go, lose our current. We're going to hop into just generic OBD2. So this, even though this is a, you know, a bigger tool, bigger screen, you can do this with a little handheld uh, generic code reader too. I'm going to let this auto ID here. We're going to pull up the freeze frame data. It's going to be the same code. So you can see all our monitors are set except for EVAP, which is kind of odd. We're going to go into freeze frame data. I just want to see something different other than 539. We, gotta, we have to have a, a label. We don't know what that means. And I'll show you why that's semi-important. Here we go. So we're going to select that. Let's see. All right, it does not have it in generic data, which I'm kind of shocked. I tell you what, we're going to start the video over and change scan tools. All right, let's see. It's a little smaller. Let's see. Here we go. We'll go to diagnose. We will let this just auto ID the VIN. Oh, got to let it hook up to the VCI first here. Give it uno momento. It's Bluetooth. Takes a second for it to find itself. She beeped. And we are in. This is just a regular Trailblazer up-level radio manual HVAC. Diagnose. We're going to pick the PCM. Uh, we'll go right to freeze frame because we already know the code. We'll see if this has any valuable information. Not a real quick test when you got to swap tools there, but we do have the Tech 2 for this vehicle, which we should be using, but we're not. <laughs> okay, here's our freeze frame data. Let's just grab. We've got to push a little snowflake. All right, here we go. So 167 degrees 
It last failed 52 miles ago. It has failed six times, past 17 times, so kind of a borderline situation here. And engine run time, 10 minutes. Okay, so there's that one. Let's take and back back out here. Let's see if the other freeze frame record is the same. Let's see, it's not. When it recorded this one, it only had had four failures, still at 167. And the engine runtime in this case was 8 minutes and 59 seconds. All right, so why is that important, or how can that help us? We're going to take and pop on the World Wide Web here. Let me load up. We're going to look up code setting criteria. I thought this was already saved in here. Let me pop in here. Hold on, folks. All right, here we go. Here's what I was looking for. I just wanted to pop into code setting criteria, and I'll leave this up on the screen a bit for you, uh, so you guys can read it, and I'll read it to you. Uh, it just basically says, as engine coolant temp sensor monitors the temperature of the coolant. This input is used by the PCM for engine control and as an enabling criteria for some diagnostics. And, and what it means by that is there are certain monitors that are going to run based on coolant temp input. So, for example, if this thing never, let's say, reached above, you know, its threshold, 176 degrees, there are certain monitors that will not run. And we could even see it when we looked at the monitors before that the EVAP monitor has, has not run. And that's perhaps, you know, because of this. This is one of the enabling criteria for other monitors to run. Uh, continuing on, it says the airflow coming into the engine is accumulated and used to determine, does it say, yeah, accumulated and used to determine if the vehicle has been driven within the conditions that would allow the engine coolant temperature to heat up normally to the thermostat regulating temperature. If the coolant temperature does not increase normally or does not reach the regulated temperature of the thermostat diagnostics that use engine coolant temp sensor as enabling criteria may not run when expected so again that just you know states that it'll prevent monitors from running uh, this uh, trouble code will only run once per ignition cycle within the enabling condition if the PCM detects that the calibrated amount of airflow and engine runtime have been met and the engine coolant temp has not met the minimum thermostat regulating temperature this P0128 will set so then we come down to, so these are conditions for making it run. Uh, you know, has engine has to have been run between 30 seconds and 30 minutes, traveled more than a mile and a half, more than 15 grams per second on the mass airflow. So a few things that have to be met in order for this to run. In order for it to set the code, the calibrated amount of engine runtime has, has to have been met. The calculated airflow coming into the engine has to have been met. The vehicle speed and distance travel has to have been met. And then this is the important one here. The calibrated coolant temp of 176 degrees Fahrenheit has not been met, or 80 degrees Celsius for our friends across the pond and up north and well, anywhere outside the U.S. So why is that important? Well, because we could go into our freeze frame data that we had already looked at, and we could see that our coolant temp was, what, 167? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, my gosh. Sorry about that, folks. I'm allergic to work. So we could see that it was 167 degrees. That you know the vehicle at this point had been running. What was this one? Eight minutes, 59 seconds. The other, the other one was 100 or was 10 minutes, and it was still at you know 167. So below the threshold. Evidently, at the point it set the code, you know, it had already met all of the other criteria that it said needed to be met. You know the engine runtime, the amount of airflow, distance traveled, you know, it's an algorithm in the computer. Computer says, okay, at this point, you should have been 176 degrees, you're not. Boom, money lights on, and there you go. So I just wanted to kind of show that to you and see how you can use this to be helpful. Let's go talk to a customer. So hopefully you guys can use freeze frame data or you already do use freeze frame data and you can see how it can be helpful in a diagnosis. Now, if I pulled the codes out of this, jumped into freeze frame data and seen that the coolant thermostat recorded temperature at time of failure was, you know, 190 degrees. Yeah. All right. At that point, I'm going to have to take the car for a drive and see, you know, what the heck is going on. We could see that it had several passes, several failures. So, you know, this is kind of borderline. Now I can go out and do some quick preliminary checks. You know, is it full of coolant? Uh, I guess what I'm trying to avoid is, you know, getting the engine hot because, 
experience tells me on these engines it needs a thermostat so you know am i beating a dead horse here a little bit well in an effort to show you how freeze frame data can be valuable it can be valuable in other ways too customer comes in oh you know my engine runs rough but only at certain you know certain rpms or certain throttle inputs perhaps they can't uh reiterate that to you and they just say well it runs rough sometimes it's stored codes you can go into freeze frame data and say oh you know it seems to be every one of these misfire records shows that it was a you know 80 percent engine load fully warmed up uh you know whatever rpm and now you can try to duplicate that failure record to get it to happen again or vice versa you know you have one that they swear oh this engine runs rough it runs terrible however they neglect to tell you it only does it very first thing in the morning when it's stone cold let's say from a leaky intake you go into freeze frame data if it recorded it at the time of the failure you can see like oh wait a minute you know every time this has been recorded uh, intake air temps you know 10 degrees fahrenheit coolant temps you know 36 so that could give you some clues to uh you know perform your diagnostics on it in this case the vehicle needs a thermostat and this may seem like somewhat of a, a lengthy process to go through all this for grabbing a thermostat code on a chevy trailblazer however when you're efficient in doing this this is a matter of five minutes you hop in it you pull the codes you jump on code setting criteria if you're not familiar with it bounce back out okay well let's do some preliminary checks yep it's full of coolant it's got 123,000 miles on it an original thermostat plus it's a super high failure item and relatively semi easy to change these things aren't a real walk in the park they're behind the alternator but that's that Go down below, leave your questions, comments, criticisms, what you think about freeze frame data, and if you use it in your diagnosis, or if perhaps you're at least going to start looking at it to see if it's helpful at all. And while you're down there, subscribe, do all the stuff you do while you're down there, and just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.